fire, they're going to burn you. But not us. The point of it is, is that we evolve over a period of time to where self-image, uh, self-esteem grew out of what we were doing then, not what we did in the past. Uh, does that make any sense? What we did in the past was a big Negro stuff inside the United States and all of that. It was big. And we took pictures so that we could say, this is me here, right here. This is just what I'm saying to me. This is me, big Negro. And after you get into business, it's self-explanatory. In fact, you don't want to show off who you are. You want to be under. You know what I mean? Anyway, all of that we have to incorporate into what we're doing now. We incorporated it. Every level of information and knowledge that we went through, we incorporated uh, during our evolution. So, reintroduce the process of institution building. That's what we're doing now. Evolve with or ahead of the movement or society. Evolve with or ahead of society. That means the rate of speed, the rate of change. Don't fight the last war. Build on it. Most people do fight that. All of our people, they did. They got burned in the Black Rebellion, and they just never got over it. You can see it in all of their behavior and their attitude. Experiment with conversion of functionaries combined with institution building. Experiment. The stage that we're going through now, we have to use all the building blocks of the past, but we Star Trek mean you're going somewhere where you ain't never been before. All of the things that we have to do out there, we're going to change them. Not change them, but example. Uh, Mukhtar would reply to something I wrote in 2010 that during this next phase, we're going to have to have everybody keep an eye on each other. Do y'all remember we, we read something like that? Okay, well, let me go in there that each member of the, the movement, the organization, will have to keep an eye on each other, the leaders, you know, the, on each other. So Mukhtar came up with his little dumb idea. But I said, we don't use that, we didn't use that, and we didn't intend to use it. Why? We're not going to fight the last wars. We're going to fight a new war. And in a new war, you have to have confidence in humanity. Well, that's what you want to have. So if you were uh, building a house, you should build some of the things in it that you want, right? So a lot of these motivation, motiversity stuff. Whatever you do, you're going to be by yourself. You're going to be all alone. No, that's right. What it says. Yeah, but it's not good. <laughs> There's good people out there. If you feel that way, you'll never find them. Because you're not looking for them. You're looking for everybody to cut your throat. And then you will Build a lonely institution. You won't even be going, you won't even look for. There's thousands, there's millions of good people out there. You're not the only good person in creation. There's, they're everywhere. You just have to have the attitude where you would attract good people. See, when you got a certain character and a certain makeup, you attract uh, people, 
pay attention. You know what I mean? People are paying attention. If they see a good company, a good, right, they say, hey man, uh, y'all yeah, be doing pretty good, look like that. Uh, and then they, they want to have some association or maybe even help, you know what I mean? Or even mentor. Yeah, people look at something, this guy is really making money. Yeah, I've been there before. I can help you a little bit on that. It happens all the time. Nobody is self created, you know, that just made itself. That's not true. So, there's good people out there. And the necessity. For the next stage is finding as many of those good people as we can, including governmental agents. Yeah. They're a little slow, but you remember they went to school a long time. The, the more you, they, and they, I don't know what, what they do in there, but anyway, they are good people in the FBI itself. I don't know why they came by here, but they came by Armstrong, whatever his name was. And the message that they was putting out was, well, you know, we're under a different dis dispensation now. This, so therefore, in other words, this guy that they got now, maybe they don't understand the whole picture. Maybe they don't understand the Zionist picture. You can't assume that everybody see the world like we do. They may see it one step above being an FBI agent. That the, they may see it on a whistleblower level, right? And stuff like that. So those Whistleblower types have to form an association. Yeah, so well, uh, they could find other companies. When I get, when I blow the whistle, I can get a job with uh, Mr. Jones, right? It makes them more willing to blow the whistle, right? Or uh, if I do this, that, and other, I can get a job with certain investigative services. If I worked in the computer field at the FBI, right, I get a job with uh, Lonesome Johnny's Neo Computer Company that spies on everybody and does, but it's, it's legal. So, you know, they have to do stuff too. We cannot assume that there's not some of that going on. We should assume that since they haven't hit the pavement running, that there's a certain amount of fear. You got to remember, it was a book years ago called True Believer. It wasn't about Islam. True Believer was about the people that belonged to certain organizations. Example, uh, communist. You know, communist, socialist, uh, and those people would try to convert people who were really serious about their belief. So if they came with them, they would be the same serious, right? If they converted. The other thing was example. You know how strong five out of six Russians, I mean five out of six Germans that was killed on the Eastern Front? was by Russians. But when those Russians face themselves, their own communist leaders, and uh, they would be crying and all, they would be just all out of sorts. Because to face an enemy is one thing, but to face your own internal, everything that you've been about and all about right, that's different. So you put that on them. Those people are not used to coming out against uh, 
the system, the few whistleblowers that we have that turned on Don uh, was good. That was good. Okay. Don did a good job for messing up America. The whole world is praying that Don lose the Germans. The French, everybody. The There's nobody world. pulling for Don. Yeah. Nobody. You can see it at the first G20 meeting. Remember when he walked on the stage and he pushed all the other big timers aside and stood there like, yeah, and I take my picture. Now all these other guys, they big. This is the German guy, this is the French guy. All of them people, they got big and they, with who they with, and they had to be strict to get that. Didn't nobody come and say, oh, you want to be leader of France? Oh, you want to be dictator of such and such? Right? right. They got to have game. Every one of them got to have game. And they looking at Don, what's wrong with this boy? Okay. So, he was messing with people who he didn't understand. He think if well, if you don't stand up and say, stop that, Don, then you're scared of me. Hmm. I can't have nothing to do with it. Said this bum, just leave him alone. He's going to run his own self in the ditch, right? That's what they say. You leave him alone. They didn't seen that before. Right? They didn't seen that before. This boy, he ain't going to be around long. It is true. Okay, let, let me move on a little bit. Uh, I would like to say is uh, this experiment with con conversion of functionaries combined with institution, that means that we, we have to experiment on and go in places where you've never been before. Is it, you, yeah, you're an adventurer. You out. The stuff that works now or have worked, it may not work on this stuff. We have to be inventive, you know. We have to take chances, we have to take risk. You know, and all in business, the bigger risk you take, the bigger, better chance you got. To. Now what we're doing, if you can't take no risk, we have to be in another business. Election behavior. The election theater, I just mentioned it briefly. We see this the election theater. Uh, cliffhangers, nail biters. You can see, we can see how it was managed. Don, you you gotta know it's somebody somebody holding them up. I can kill somebody on Fifth Avenue and wouldn't nothing happen. Only people can guarantee that is a Zionist. And nobody would say that except he's stupid to say that. Everything, they knew who they was picking. They knew a megalomaniac. We got a Muslim like that with a big head. Anyway, uh, here's a long story. So they knew who they was choosing. All the characteristics, all the habits, all the customs, all the behavior patterns, they knew what he had. And they took his daughter and uh, married her off to Kushner. That's why you have a 35 year old going all over the world doing stuff. He don't know nothing about nothing. He don't have to know nothing. The Zionists are telling him. Mossad is telling him. See, now, before I close, I want to mention who we're dealing with. We're dealing with the most sophisticated, rotten, slowdown system in the world. It's not the United States, it's Mossad. It's the Zionists. The Zionists don't care about real Jews, 
they don't care about nobody. In fact, the Zionists came to power by killing Jews in Iraq and everywhere else. So they'd have to come to Israel. And half the Jews know it. Right? They started problems right. for the Jews. Yeah. You know, the rabbis, you talk with them, they say, yeah, we know. He said, when we was in Iraq, talking about the Jews, the real curly lock wearing Jews. He said, the people would come out and, and kiss some of our clothing, the Muslims. That's how nice they were, sir. It's all nice. You know? And the Christians, nobody never did nothing to the Christians. Talking about Syria, parts of Iraq, the Christians had it going on. Right? If you're talking about Jews and the Christians, Jews being oppressed in Iran, it is the most ridiculous thing in the world. Why? They've been there since 589. B.C. If they ain't figured out a way to leave, <laughs> right? Daniel in the lion's den, where is it at? It's in Persia. Yeah. Mint, mint, tickle, parasine, the writing on the wall, that's in Babylon and Persia, right? Yeah. If they hadn't figured out a way they got to leave, if they, before then, then they, 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 they should be given, a, you know, a slow pill. They, they would be slow. Right? They would be almost idiots. So, we have to take all the accumulated knowledge and history and associate it in something that's functional, what well, nowadays, that will carry us to the next spot. When you do that, you're a trailblazer. That's what it is, trailblazing and trailblazing. Nobody's been there before. We don't have nobody we can look and say, who's, they, they went to the right, but we gotta get behind them. I'm sorry, there's nobody like that here. There's no movement, there's no organization, ain't nobody, right? So we, we are the ones, that's not from arrogance, but nobody has the backbone, the courage, and nothing to deal with these systems as they are. And we're still here. Why? Other people are afraid of the Zionists. We play with the Zionists. Islamic Institute for Counter Zionist American Psychological Warfare. We ain't scared of you, right? And that throws them off. It's not that they can't do anything about it, but if you have decades of writing, and all of these flyers and all of this, and all of those things there, if they kill you, people are gonna go and start looking at them. Why did they do that to that boy? What did he do? Supposing 10,000 people start going out over this and they share it with other people and they say, that's why they killed that brother. Right? And that's the thing about martyrdom. When they always say, or the dictators say, we don't want to kill so and so, we'll make a martyr out of it. That's what they mean. That's what they mean. We're using everything at our disposal. And so far, it's, it's working and it's fine. And so far, it's good too. You think it ain't fun being 75, you got another thing coming. Especially when uh, the life expectancy is 25 and 30. If, you know all your friends, if the games you was involved in, the life expectancy is 30 as a senior citizen almost. 35, look at all the kids out there that got killed in the 80s, 90s, 2000s. Hey man, what was the average age? What was the average age? They in the early twenties. All of them. All of them in the early twenties. Anyway, uh, it's getting a little late. Tomorrow we'll bring this to a level, another level of 
Sonato Juno. Sonato Juno will continue to be more religious orientated and on, on Sunday, uh, sub, uh, not September, but November, yeah. the November the 8th, we hope to have a nice picture, kind of organize what we want to do now, what project management means, what job description means, what all of that means to us right now. And we want to thank everybody for their participation. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, it seems like it ain't no big deal, but it is a big deal when, uh, you know, when all this stuff starts. All you have to do is be consistent. You put a little piece together today, a little piece tomorrow. You look around in a year, and you put a whole package together just by cruising. So, are there any questions or comments? <clears throat> with, uh, with all the uh, the election stuff, you know, you think boss man be kind of busy right now. But uh, has there been any uh, recent contact you've had with the system, or knowingly? Mm. Well, to tell you the truth, <laughs> you see this. This is for surgery. You remember the other day that I had the, the, the crutch and I was walking down the thing, and then I went down and did something. I came back, turned it flips almost. Okay, when I got up this morning, I came down and I just, you could probably smell the chicken. Yeah. And I was just standing there, I put the chicken in. In fact, anybody want to test it, just one on top of the stove. So anyway, I left it in about four hours. But as I was putting the chicken in, all of a sudden, I got a back pain that reminds me of when I said I was running out in California. And I said, I've never heard like that in my life. This back pain. And it's internal. It ain't something that happened, you know what I mean? And you just have a back pain. That's boss man. When boss man, he want to slow you down. If you're on the right road, he want to slow you down and he'll make you mad. Boss man, uh, when this stuff happens, that means the boss man, when he lets you know, I can touch you internally. This ain't nothing come from outside, it ain't nothing you drink. But all of a sudden, bam, you're hurt and you're hurt bad. You're hurt so bad, so, but it helps you. So the first thing I did, I just limped on out to the little workout room. And I did what I could, then I warmed up and I stretched enough to get a good workout in on the iron. And I was gonna go and uh, get a walk in. Cause what it do is it help you say, 